Uh, hi, good morning. My name is uh, Luis Marchiori. I am part of the panel implementation of global framework for climate services in African countries and regions. Uh, I am from uh, a company named Codex from Brazil. Uh, and today we're going to talk uh, about geospatial tools and their use to slow down climate change. Uh, so, Codex is a corporation that operates in the fields of geotechnology, electricity, agribusiness, sanitation, and utilities, with solutions aimed to provide digital transformation for a sustainable development. We develop technical systems for sustainability with sophisticated solutions for regulation, strategic management, operational efficiency, and decision support systems. Our specialists work to facilitate and optimize the process of companies in the public and private sectors in order to ensure safety and efficiency in their respective sectors. Codex is based on sustainability and is directly linked to ESG practices, maintaining its environmental, social, and corporate governance responsibility. We seek data-driven innovation and we use the latest technology to ensure solutions that benefit the environment and society as a whole. So, uh, people are talking about climate change, but how can we really understand it? We need tools to measure it, to know where it's happening, what and who is going to be affected. For this reason, geospatial technology are the tools needed to do that. And I'm going to present geospatial technologies as a strategic planning instrument. The two geospatial fields we're going to explore today are the remote sensing through the use of satellite imagery and the geographic information systems. These are some of the clients that we deployed solutions use these geospatial tools using satellite imagery and geographic information systems. I'm going to pinpoint some projects that shows the capability of these technologies. The first step when you talk about strategic planning instrument is gathering data. And why this is important? because if you want to analyze, to make decisions, to have any insight, we need data. We need to know what's on the ground, what is changing, who we are affecting. Otherwise, it's just a pointless speeches. So first of all, a very helpful kind of project that allow us to fully understand where we live. And it's called spatial data infrastructure. Actually, environmental spatial data infrastructure. Uh, spatial data infrastructures are projects designed to centralize data, creating an environment that can be used to better planning and understanding the land use. It compiles data of several sources, making them available to the public. In this particular case, we use Esri platform, which make available to the public several layers of information within dashboards, story maps, and customized maps. At these videos, we can see some of the developments such as the website, story map, some information dashboards, a geographic information system, a customized application designed to see the temperature changing during time, and more layers available through the ESRI Living Atlas. The Observatory is another kind of project. It's a data aggregation platform, which brings historical data, investment goals, and macro and sector levels of capital stock. It also presents international compar comparisons, a pipeline, a pipeline of national infrastructure projects, and the management and governance hub for international references. In Brazil, this is the first initiative to do so and has the intention to attract more investments to the country infrastructure. 
This project has financed by Inter-American Development Bank. The second step after we start the gathering data, we need to start monitoring our region, our country, our planet. Every change we can observe is relevant in our fight against the climate change. This project, it's called Climate Charts. It could be classified as big data, especially because it used more than 5,000 climate charts. Uh, it used uh, charts for 15 weather variables that was collected every hour for the past 30 years. Using weather models and weather station data, we can analyze data with much more details. In this example, we can see the Tocantins state in Brazil, which has a tropical climate. In this particular project, we can see the rain distribution during the year, showing that in South Hemisphere winter, we have almost no rain at all. When we analyze the temperature, we can see that in the last 30 years, the average temperature of that area increased by one degree. The environmental uh, monitoring. It's a geospatial tool that um, private companies use to monitor the environment using a geographic, geographic information system and satellite imagery. They can track illegal occupation and deforestation of areas under their legal responsibility. So with the, this project, uh, the, the private companies concessions of roads, they keep tracking all the illegal um, occupation and deforestation of the area around the, the roads. Deforestation monitoring have a special place in our portfolio. Brazilian Amazon forest is so big that only with remote sensing that authorities could have the capability to reduce illegal deforestation. For monitoring, it is needed as many images of as many sensors, as many dates as we can. In this example, we can see an area compared with two images from two different sensors with less than two months difference between them. Uh, on the first uh, video, we can see we use the um, European Space Agency Sentinel image that have a very good uh, temporal uh, resolution to, so we can keep tracking the, um, the deforestations. So when you gather data, when you monitor what's changing, it is time to understand which are the consequences. It's time to plan a sustainable future and to respond to natural disasters associated with climate change. So once we realize the climate is changing, we need to provide the public agent with tools to reduce response time and the manual procedures. When a natural disaster strikes, Time is vital and in minimize damage and save lives. Here we can see a dashboards that help tracking who is affected and the humanitarian help available to be sent to the disaster location. The lower videos show how a disaster is registered in the system and it's followed real time by the headquarters of the operation. This project, uh, also compiles thousands of events, almost 30 years of events, and it provides a structured database, the capability to prepare for, a new, for new natural disasters to, to happen, and also provide a system based on the as reviewed works to make easier and quicker the insertion of new events in the system. The zoning, uh, it's a project that uh, geospatial tools helps a never ending problem where to build, where to invest. Countries needed to keep growing and we can analyze and decide where are the smaller impact areas. How can we build a sustainable government plan? Which regions are capable to receive more investments? Environmental and ecological zoning provides decision-making attributes to a multivariable geographic processing. Uh, and ESG planning. The central objective of the observatory, which I mentioned before, is to promote the development of sustainable infrastructures in the country with a view to attraction investments through the implementation of a framework proposed by the Inter-American Development Bank. Based on the pilot implemented in Mexico, a methodology was developed 
to evaluate the sustainability attributes of infrastructure projects in the Brazilian context. Of the 66 sustainability attributes proposed by the Inter-American Development Bank, 57 are included in the Brazilian methodology. This methodology evaluates projects through their life cycle, considering four dimensions, economic financial, environmental and climate resilience, social and institutional and governance. And finally, it's worth noting that Brazil's methodology is aligned with the UN Sustainable Development Goals, with the Paris Agreement, with the G20 principles for quality in infrastructure investments, with the Blue Dot Network, an investment certification initiative supported by the OECD, and with the Multilateral Development Bank Infrastructure Platform, which aggregates the 16 common attributes of infrastructure sustainability assessed by multilateral development banks. So we need to gather data and, and understand the change in land use. So uh, from what I presented is um, that after we gather data and start monitoring, we create the conditions to understand, plan and response to the change in the most interesting thing is that when you do these steps, we continue to generate data in a loop that keeps increasing its quality of the strategic planning instrument indefinitely. So every time we keep gathering data, we increase every iteration, we keep increasing the quality of the strategic planning instrument. And just to finish, we need to gather data to understand the change in land use because land use change leads to weather change. Weather change leads to climate change. Climate change raises intensity of natural disasters. Raising intensity in natural disasters impact more people and cost more. Geospatial tools track all these steps that gives the opportunity to change the outcome. Thank you very much. <laughs>